proper planning prevents poor performance. Now, if you're an athlete, I'm sure you've heard that told to you by a coach or an instructor of some sort. In business, I hear it quite often. It's true. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Well, we see this in aging. We see people planning for the future. They're making financial plans. They're planning for long-term care. They're decluttering the home. But what are they focusing on? If you're focusing on inevitable degeneration, could that possibly be causing harm? In other words, could our mindset about aging actually manifest the very degeneration we're hoping to avoid today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast? Welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Health, wellness, exercise, nutrition, and a whole lot more. Got questions? Call us and leave a message at 251-278-EDGE or message us at Personal Edge Fitness on Facebook and Instagram at Team PE on Twitter or PersonalEdgeFitness.com. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. My name is Garrett Williamson. I'm president of Personal Edge Fitness and the host of the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course, continuing our series about is it aging or jumping on one of my most favorite topics. I've touched on this several times before, and that is dealing with mindset. Now, before I get into this, I want to tell you how to get in touch with us. If you have any questions about this show or any others, or you have any questions about dispelling the myths of health, fitness, and wellness, please reach out to us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's, of course, our website and our Facebook page. Also, hit me up on Twitter or X at, at Team PE. Like I say, you can reach out to us through the website. I also want to put a plug in for Ask Katie. Katie Carey, one of our exercise coordinators here, has broken off and done her own YouTube series. It's on our YouTube channel about Ask Katie. She's taking that on herself and doing a great job with it. So if you have any questions about Ask Katie, hey, reach out those same way. Jericho 251 278 3343. Garrett, G A R R E T T, at personaledgefitness.com. Facebook page, website, also at Team PE, if you have any questions for Katie. My wife and I were watching a show this weekend. There's a, so many reality shows out there. There's tons of them. My wife and I look for shows where she and I engage. We actually talk. And one of the shows that we like, we love houses. Looking at real estate, we like looking at different houses and what have you. And there's a show, and it's on, I think, HGTV. It's been, I, I didn't know this. Just started watching it recently. It's, it's been out for years. It's House Hunters. It's where they take a family or a couple, or individual, whatever, and they show them three different houses. They find out what all they're interested in. They show them three different houses. And then at the end of the show, they pick which house they, and actually buy a house and move into it. And my wife and I are talking back and forth about which one they think they're going to take and which one we think works for them and picking up some ideas for our own house, which is kind of neat. But the reason I bring this up is this hit me. It's amazing. I, I've been researching this topic over 30 years and still things hit me that surprised me that I'd never even noticed that was so nonchalant. And then when I've got my you know, live age brain on, these things hit me and they hit me in a very different way. I'm watching this couple and they're buying, I guess it was their first off base house. The husband happened to have been in the military and he recently left the military and was going into the private sector. So I think this was their first off base home. And because they were talking about having to take care of things they hadn't taken care of before. And this individual, if he retired from the military, he retired early. Because I know I've forgotten the exact years, but I know that you can, you know, you start early. You can retire pretty early in the military. What I'm getting at is his number was not very old by any means. I, I, I want to say possibly in his 30s, maybe 40s. But I think they had a young child and possibly were thinking about having another. So it gives you kind of the time frame that they were in, in their lives. And when they were looking for homes, what struck me funny was that he was adamant about not getting a house that had a lot of stairs in it. And he kept talking about, when I get older, I'm not going to be able to climb these stairs. When I get older, I'm not going to be climbing these stairs. And most people look at that going, wow, that's great planning. That's the planning for the future. And I started thinking about he was the houses that had stairs, he was going up and down them fine. He may have had an injury to his knees or something that he didn't want to discuss, but he just said that you know, his knees won't, won't like this or whatever. But but I don't think, I don't think it was, and he seemed to be getting up and down them just fine. And he kept talking about, when I get older, I'm not going to want to climb these stairs. I've seen examples of that for years. And not till then did it really hit me. Wait a second. He's planning for degeneration. He's at a point in his life. I mean, he was managing those stairs fine. So if there is an injury, whatever injury he has it is completely manageable. I mean, we've known about this for years. This is not even brand new research that we have. He could easily maintain that leg strength and keep going. And at that young an age, he was already planning 
for this degeneration. But it got me thinking. There's so much information out there about planning for your future, planning for your retirement, senior couples making sure they're planning for their you know later senior years. And I get it. I mean, the financial planning, making sure that you've got a, a will drawn up, making sure that you're not going to outlive your money. It's one of the other popular terms that have said, making sure that you've got, you know, a community around you, uh, making sure that you've got people to reach out to people, you know, you're by family, because a lot of people do that. They move, move by family or whatever. I, I understand all that. But getting obsessed with it, getting obsessed with thinking about this quote unquote inevitable decline has become commonplace. It's been commonplace. I mean, it's crazy to think that the ideas that I'm sharing are radical <laughs> because it's it's so commonplace to plan on declining. And it drives me nuts because we have so much information out there. These studies that I talk to you about all the time, so many studies that say this this inevitable decline is just not there. It's not real. It's made up. So I started doing some research on it. Because I don't like talking about this stuff. And I, as always, I'll give you my opinion. If it's my opinion, I'll tell you it's my opinion. If it's if it's backed up by a study, I'll, I'll tell you that. And I started researching because I've talked about mindset before. And I talk all the time about that Harvard study where they did a lot on age cues and mindset. And it, that was just fascinating. But I've got some more for you today. But I'm using an example to kind of put this in perspective. So if you think I'm crazy, look at it this way. Visualization is a tool that many athletes use. Actually, whenever I say athletes, I start thinking about business too because there's so many things that translate from the athletic field into business. You plan to succeed and you use a visualization technique, especially athletes. Dwight Stones was famous for this. He was a reporter for a while, but he was an incredible high jumper. He was an American uh, record holder, a world record holder. He also competed, I want to say 84, 88, somewhere there when he was a little long in the tooth, as they say, and he, and he, he did rather well. I, didn't, I don't think he won, but he did rather well. But he would do this visualization. You could see it's the most physical application of visualization that I've ever seen. He would literally go through the jump and he would be bouncing his head. And if you hear me pulling away from the mic, if you're listening to this I'm actually imitating him where he would actually go through the entire jump and he would he would be standing back there it would be his turn to jump and you could see him literally going through the entire jump in his mind and he would act out a lot of it he always said that he had to see himself clear it he had to see himself clear the bar if he didn't see himself clear the bar in his mind then he wouldn't he wouldn't clear it he would miss I'd use this in pole vaulting I noticed the times where I really concentrate on kicking the bar hitting the bar that's exactly what I did so this is a tactic that we use that we use quite a bit. So Dwight Stones would focus on clearing the bar. He would cement that in his brain. And whatever you end up focusing on, you're going to put your efforts towards that. Whatever you focus on, what you believe is going to happen, it's pretty well going to happen. There's a, there's a quote that's thrown around quite often. I'm not sure who came up with it originally, but you have to believe it to achieve it, but there's more to it than that. You can dream it, you can believe it, you believe it, you can achieve it. So developing that thing that you focus on, a lot of times determines your success or failure. Well, if we're focusing on degeneration, we're buying houses without stairs, we're planning on decline that early, does that bring about, does that speed up the degeneration that we're trying to avoid? Well, let's look into it. I have my reading glasses on here because, as always, I want to bring you some studies about this. And there are quite a few. I'm, I'm going to touch on a few of them. Self-fulfilling prophecy. That's basically what I was talking about there. A research paper from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology found that older individuals who held negative stereotypes about aging. In other words, they were believing in inevitable cognitive decline or physical debility performed worse in memory and physical tasks than their counterparts who held more positive views. That was the only difference. One of them thought negatively, the other one thought positively. It showed in their memory performance and physical tasks. Another one, stress and worry. I've talked about stress before. I've done a whole podcast on that. Stress is a real thing. It is a fight or flight response, and it starts in the brain. The brain starts shutting down different systems that you don't need, narrowing tunnel vision, shutting down certain sphincters, your digestion shuts down, whatever, it's conserving energy. And that's what stress is. Your heart rate rises. It's trying to get more oxygenated blood to the body. That's, that's what stress. But stress and worry, consistently worrying about decline could result in chronic stress. A chronic stress has been linked to numerous health complications like heart disease, diabetes, and even accelerated cellular aging. I mean, they have studies out there that talk about that, that have dove into even causing problems on your cellular level. Now, I just got finished doing doing a podcast. I told you uh, the, the last podcast, number 201, dealt with a discussion that I got into with somebody about inevitable cellular decline. And actually, inevitable cellular decline isn't true. It's how we feed it. It's how we build it, whatever. And stress can actually cause trouble on a cellular level. Now, the flip side of that, improved physical health 
basically through positive thinking. A study published in the journal Health Psychology reported that older individuals who felt younger than their chronicle age. Now, they just thought. They just felt. You know, I know I'm 60, but I sure don't feel like 60, whatever number you want to pick out there, who felt younger than their chronicle age showed lower mortality than those who felt their age or older. Lower death. <laughs> Lower deaths strictly because they felt younger. Uh, the researchers in this, in this study speculate that feeling younger could lead to better health habits, increased resilience, and a more robust immune system. Now, those last two I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to talk about that first one. Feeling younger could lead to better health habits. What's that got to do with, with living longer? Well, it's what I've been telling you. There's four things that dictate ability, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, mindset. And if you're thinking positively, you're going to address fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and mindset better. That's more healthy habits. So therefore, prolong your life. This one, I left this for last on purpose. I've done a lot of research recently on dementia and Alzheimer's. And, and what really started me doing that is the, is the water doctor and his fantastic book. He's got several of them, but one of them, you're not sick, you're thirsty. Also, you don't need medication, you need water. Where he talked about, he treated dementia, early onset dementia patients with just hydrating them, not super hydrating them. Most, most people think that when I talk about drinking 100 ounces of water a day, which is the recommended daily allowance of water, that that is hyperhydration. It's not. It's normal hydration. And that's what he did and actually started changing the cognitive reverse and the cognitive decline. And so it, it led me to start researching it more and finding that I talk about obesity being the number one killer. It is the number one risk factor, number one risk factor for seven of the top 10 killers. But it happens to be number two risk factor for dementia. And I bring this up because we always think that dementia is, is just in your genes. You can push it along, but if you got it in your genes, it's just there. That's it. You're going to get it. It's going to happen. And as I've told you before, the reason that we don't have all the answers yet is we're still studying the human body, which we've been studying since the 1500s. And every year we're chipping away at this gene excuse. Oh, it's in the genes. We're chipping away at that and finding differences. And dementia is one of them. Now, long lead up to this last one, but this should blow your mind. It got me excited, kind of blew my mind, and I've been studying this stuff for a while. Researchers at Yale University, pretty decent school from what I understand, found that individuals who held positive beliefs about aging were less likely to develop dementia. Watch this next part. Even if they had a high risk gene for the condition, holding positive beliefs about aging were less likely to develop dementia, even if they had a high-risk gene for the condition. Therefore, they concluded the optimistic mindset they suggest could be productive. My question to you is, is that argument of, oh, I'm just going to get old, or I'm getting old, or, or whatever, or that excuse, as I say, is that so important to you? Is it so important to you that you'll bet your life on it? You'll cause decline. You're so wrapped up in it, so bought into it, that you're looking to cause decline. You will trade years of your life so that you can have that argument. I'm not pushing exercise today. I'm not even really pushing water, even though I'm drinking my water here and I've mentioned my 100 ounces a day. I'm not really pushing that today. I'm just pushing a positive mindset. We've got football season coming up. It starts next week. In the South, that's, of course, very big. College football is huge. You would not think about telling your favorite team, look, y'all don't have a chance, you know? Best thing you can do is, you know, plan to hopefully make it to the fourth quarter. Make sure you've got enough depth in your players to make it there. Maybe you can pray for a lightning storm and they call the game or something. That's much like being physically fit and planning for no stairs in your house. That's setting up a negative mindset. And the reverse, I would say, that you want to strike a healthy balance as far as this. I understand that. Avoiding trip hazards, making sure you've got a well-lit hall, and, and the, perfectly fine. I mean, accidents are one of the top 10 killers in the world. So you don't want an accident. But I would plan for stairs in my house. It would help me on a daily basis without thinking about it. Maintain my steps, maintain my leg strength. I'm activating those muscles and telling my body not to atrophy. But I'm certainly not planning to fall. I'm not focusing on it. I'm planning to live longer, and I'm encouraging everybody to think about and plan on living longer. Because having that positive mindset, as the studies show, does make a difference, does help you live longer, and it's one more way we help you reach your level of wellness. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast with Garrett Williamson. Subscribe now and be a part of the show by calling 251 278 Edge or message us on Facebook and Instagram at Personal Edge Fitness or at Team PE on Twitter and visit us at PersonalEdgeFitness.com.